Good morning and welcome. Obviously, we're a very select group this morning. Lovely to see you all. Lovely indeed. Welcome to St. Michael and All Angels. Thank you for joining us this Christmas. Whether you're here in person or perhaps watching the on live um, television or YouTube production. For the past 22 months of the pandemic, we've been urged to physically distance. Uh, but at Christmas, we're reminded that God is never distant from ourselves. He's as close as our own breath, as close as our own heartbeat. You will be invited today to receive the bread of the Eucharist, Holy Communion, Sacrament of the Altar. But if for any reason you choose not to do that, you are most welcome to simply come forward, put your hands over your chest, and ask for a blessing. Um, sanitizer will be administered before and after receiving the Eucharist uh, or a blessing. And I promise I will sanitize my hands frequently also. As we all know, the number of COVID cases has gone up. On this Christmas day, as we leave, we have a very simple gift for you. Everyone leaving gets a package of Lysol wipes. So you will have a very safe Christmas. Yeah. Please know that whatever frame of mind you're in this morning, whether you're on top of the world or in the depths, you are welcome here, and God loves you beyond all telling. We're not allowed to sing this Christmas, apart from our excellent cantor, but you are welcome to hum, if you like. Lastly, we hope you will make this your church home, if you don't have one. from their sins. We light the Christ candle in the center of this wreath and rejoice that the promise of God has been fulfilled in the coming of the baby born and placed in a manger. Let us pray. Gracious and mighty God, we celebrate your goodness to us 
as we enter into the joy of Christmas. As your love has been revealed to us in all its fullness, we pray the love of Christ may abound in our hearts and homes. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored our human nature. May we share the divine life of your Son, Jesus Christ, who humbled himself to share our humanity and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy. For in the plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem, the Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
A reading from Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory Glory to you, you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The gospel of Christ. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. God, who is eternal and outside of time, has entered our world as an infant. What was God thinking? Didn't God look to see what a mess this world is in? Before God decided to enter the world as a helpless babe? As we listen to commercials for beauty products, and hear the claims of this or that supplement to banish pain and disease and 
possibly even ward off old age if we believe it, we might well conclude that human beings in our century are on a serious quest to deny and reject our humanity in hopes of becoming less mortal. But today we hear that God has freely and lovingly chosen to become a human with all the frustrations and disappointments of human life. Doesn't that tell you that we need to make peace with being humans, with who we are? If God becomes a human being, then it's a pretty good bet that God wants us to embrace our own humanity as well. So although the word existed long before creation, we know God best in the person of Jesus. When we see Jesus, ponder Jesus, pray to Jesus, learn to love and try our best to be guided by Jesus, we grow in our relationship with God. And here's the irony. Human beings become better humans because God became a human being. If God is fully human in the person of Jesus, and he most assuredly is, then you and I need to recognize our calling, our highest calling, is to be the very best humans we can be. Not out of fear, but out of love and appreciation for all we see in the person of Jesus. The Christmas story reminds us that the whole biblical narrative is both profound and rather odd. Frederick Buechner uh, said that the incarnation, God putting on flesh and becoming human, is a kind of vast joke, whereby the creator of the ends of the earth come among us in diapers? You have to admit, it was pretty incredibly daring of God, knowing what depths of depravity humans can sink to. As we all know, people come to Christmas with different personal feelings. One person comes home excited and joyful to see family and friends. Another person simply longs for a bit of shelter and peace and quiet away from the pressures of work. A third approaches Christmas with great apprehension, wondering if again there'll be a family row and people will storm out. A fourth, perhaps it's the first Christmas since the death of a spouse, a child, a sibling, or a parent. That's always poignant. And fifth, a person who is lonely and who finds all the gaiety of Christmas makes their loneliness deeper. Yet despite all these diverse feelings, Christmas does come. Christ the Savior is born. Jesus enters our world and partakes of our joy and sorrow. Jesus does not enter a make-believe world. He doesn't go to Disneyland. The world Jesus enters is our lost, confused, and fallen world, which he loves beyond all telling. How very odd of God. The opening verses of the Gospel of John that I read tells us that the primary reason God became human and dwelt with us is so we might have abundant life. Not mere existence, but life in all its fullness. I quote, what has come into being in him was life, and that life was the light of all people. So the big question on this Christmas and every day is whether we want the life that is offered us in Jesus. 
Do we desire the life that is the light of all people? Some people clearly do not. They prefer the darkness. They prefer evil. But just imagine the possibility of being truly alive in Jesus. Brian McLaren, a contemporary author, says that this aliveness is a gift available to all by God's grace. It's the fruit not of grasping and taking, but of generosity and giving. It flows not from fear, but from faith, not from resisting, but from reconciliation. The aliveness is a harvest of service and servanthood, not dominance and bullying. This life is a fountain that can well up within us. To be so alive is a choice. It is also a gift. Of course, there are people who claim to be alive, but are actually consumed by hatred or fixated on trying to control others. We've met those, haven't we? That isn't being alive as Jesus is alive, or human as Jesus is human. Aliveness is fed by love and faith and hope. Hatred is a bit like cancer. It consumes and consumes, but it's never actually nourished. Well, faith, hope, and love grow, blossom, and bear fruit. In the first creation, in Genesis, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Then, when the word became flesh and dwelt in our midst, Jesus invited us to join him in being the light. In fact, that's exactly what Jesus is doing today on Christmas. The word made flesh invites each of us to be alive and live in the light. So this Christmas, enter the light and come alive and then join Jesus in being the light that banishes the darkness for others. He came to what was his own, and his people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
the day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. In joy and humility, let us pray to the creator of the universe, saying, Lord, grant us peace. By the good news of our salvation brought to Mary by the angel, this good news is shared throughout the world today. In our Diocese of Algoma, we pray for the Church of the Holy Manger, Barkway. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Episcopal Church in Japan. Hear us, O Lord, Lord, grant, grant us, us peace. peace. By the mystery of the word made flesh, on this holy night, draw us into the mystery of your love. We pray for Archbishop Anne, Bishop Victoria, and the Reverend Enid in transition. Hear us, O Lord, Lord, Lord grant, grant us, us peace. peace. By the birth and time of the timeless Son of God, we pray that the church may be continually reborn, that peace may be kept in all the world, a sign of God's love. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, and all in authority. May all world leaders strive for peace and justice in the world. Hear us, O Lord. Lord, Lord grant, grant us, us peace. peace. By the manifestation of the King of glory to the shepherds and magi, your glory is for all peoples, rich and poor, the oppressed, for refugees, the unloved, those in prison, those made homeless by wars or the effects of climate change. And today we especially pray for those in our hearts and on our minds. Larry, Skip, Shirley, Bill, Pat, Sally, Elsie, Mo, Marilyn, Kathy, Patrick, James, Marion, Michelle, Bishop Tom, Jen, and Rick and Joyce. Hear us, O Lord. Lord, Lord grant, grant us peace. peace. By the submission of the Maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, let us pray for all who dwell in darkness and have not recognized that the Maker of the world submitted himself and came as a tiny baby boy, the savior of all, lying in a manger. Hear us, O Lord. Lord, Lord grant, grant us, us peace. peace. By the baptism of the Son of God in the river, river Jordan, hear us, O Lord. Lord, Lord grant, grant us peace. Grant that the kingdoms of this world may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that in a world torn apart by divisions and strife, we may be instruments of your peace. We have seen the light of Christ. Let it shine through us. Hear us, O Lord. Lord, Lord grant, grant us, us peace. peace. 
Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to this holy table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you stand as you are able? My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God of peace, your Son, Jesus Christ, has reconciled us to you. May all we offer you today renew us as members of your household. We ask this in his name. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, who in the mystery of the incarnation was made perfect man of the flesh of Mary, his mother. In him we have seen a new and radiant vision of your glory. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices and sing our joyful hymn of praise to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice that we made acceptable in him, <coughs> may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father, Lord in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Take and receive the body of Christ and give thanks. The body of Christ broken and given for you. The body of Christ broken and given for you, keep you in eternal life. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you, keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ, given for you, keep you in life everlasting. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, given for you. The body of Christ, broken and given for you, keep you in eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you, keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ, broken and given for you, keep you in eternal life.
Let us pray. Father of all, the child born for us is the savior of the world. May he who made us your children welcome us into your kingdom where he is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>